In this video, we are going to take a look at these two families of functions a times sine of bx plus c and a times cosine of bx plus c. And then later we'll look at some specific example. Now, if we look at this family of functions on GeoGebra, we can see that as we vary the first parameter a, it just corresponds to stretching these functions in the vertical direction. And if a becomes negative, it can also flip these functions upside down. Now, changing the second parameter b corresponds to stretching these functions in the horizontal direction. And then finally, adding this constant c at the end, it just shifts these functions up or down, depending on the sign of this constant c. Now, for certainty, here I'm going to assume that this constant a is positive. So we don't flip these functions upside down. But if they are flipped upside down, you can always add a minus sign at the end. So if we look at the graph of these functions, this vertical shift c corresponds to this level line in the middle. And of course, the maximum value here will be c plus a, and this minimum value will be c minus a. And in particular, the amplitude a, which is just the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value, in this particular case, it will be equal to 2a. So you can find this constant a just by taking the amplitude and dividing it by 2. And finally, to find this constant b, we can take a look at the period t, which is this point here on the x-axis when the cosine comes back to the maximum for the first time, or where sine comes back to zero for the second time. And when you plug in this period inside these functions, well, inside sine and cosine, you will be plugging in b times t. And this should correspond to 2 pi in the original sine and cosine. So from here, you can find this constant b as 2 pi over the period t. Actually, this constant b also has several names, and one of the names is angular frequency. In any case, by looking at the graph of these functions, you can find this constant c by looking at the shift, and you can find the constant a by looking at the amplitude, or maximum and minimum value, and finally, you can find the constant b by looking at the period of these functions. Next, let's look at one particular example. Now, in this example, we will look at daylight in Toronto. And we can see that the longest day is on June 21st, when the daylight is 15 hours and 26 minutes, or translating it into hours is 15.43 hours. And the shortest day on December 21st, when the daylight is 8 hours and 55 minutes, and then again translating into hours, it will be 8.92 hours. Now, when trying to find a function that models this daylight, it's convenient to start from one of these days. So, our time zero will be either December 21st or June 21st. And here I'm going to choose December 21st. And the reason it's convenient to start from one of these days is because in this case we can simply use cosine function, because cosine at time zero takes its largest value. And so if you start with June 21st, you can simply use cosine, because it's also the largest or the longest daylight. And here, since I start from December 21st, Again, it will be cosine, just flipped upside down. So actually, it takes the smallest value at this time equal to zero. And so, on the vertical axis, we are going to have our daylight measured in hours. And on the horizontal axis, we will have our time measured in days. And so, we can see that, first of all, the amplitude A here will be 15.43 minus 8. 
So in this particular case, it will be 6.51. And so to find this constant little a, you have to divide the amplitude by 2. So in this particular case, it's going to be 3.255. Now to find the shift of this constant c, you have to find the middle value between the maximum and minimum. So actually you just can take the average of these two values, which in this particular case will be 12.175. And finally, to find the constant b, we have to divide 2 pi by the period. And in this particular case, of course, the period is 365 days. And so the formula for this function will be 12.175 minus 3.255 times cosine of 2 pi divided by 365 times t. And of course the reason I put minus instead of plus is because this cosine function here is flipped upside down. Right at time zero on December 21st, our daylight is the shortest. So that's where this function takes the minimum value rather than the maximum. Finally, what if you want to start on January 1st and you want January 1st to be day one? Now, of course, this means that we need to shift our functions by a few days and it will look something like this. And so the question is, what do we add or subtract to our t? And we can see that when December 21st was day 0, you can actually check that January 1st was day 11. And now we want it to be day 1. So we want to plug in 1 and get 11 in the previous function. And of course, this is done by adding plus 10. Okay, so this will be the formula for this function if you want January 1st to be t equals to 1. Again, because if you want January 1st to be day 1, you want to plug in 1 here, and by adding 10, you're actually plugging in 11. And in the previous representation, 11 exactly corresponded to January 1st. And so now you can take any day of the year plug into this function, and then compare its output with the actual data, which you can easily find online. And this should give you an excellent approximation.